Um, you get to play the Yoko Ono of the piece, really, in a way here. You <laughs> just might break up this fine bromance. And I don't know whether it was kind of tough, in a way, given the role that you had to sort of be kind of causing a reaction, really, more than, than a action. Yeah, I'd say that's just a good summarise of it. Definitely, <laughs> she causes a reaction. Um, I think the reaction is already there before he meets her, to be honest with you. I think he's already made up his mind. Sherlock, in his in his case, to uh, any woman, any woman could turn up. She just happens to be somebody, uh, probably to his dismay, quite likable, quite friendly, quite excited to meet him. She, I think she has she's heard so much about him through Watson, and he she just happens to uh, get his animosity because of his fear, which is a bit of a shame. Well, I know that. Um Rachel McAdams' character, Irene Adler, just turns up in one book, uh, The Scandal of Bohemia. And your character turns up first in The Sign of Four, but turns up in quite a few of the original yeah, books. Yeah, she's around, and, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I don't know whether that was quite valuable. I don't know whether there was a lot in there or whether it was kind of what was in the script was pretty much what you had to go by or what you wanted to go by. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I had a look because I wanted to, just for my own curiosity, I wanted to see... I mean, I never read the books. I didn't... I just knew Sherlock Holmes from the TV and I d it wasn't anything that I was familiar with, so I just... You know, I wanted to go and have a bit of a dig around. And she does turn up a, a little bit, um, you know, in, in, in quite a few books. But she's, um, as far as research, she's on the page, you know, as far as, as I was concerned. What was in there was enough for me. She is probably, I, I think, of all the main characters, she's one of the, I think, the only one who doesn't get to join this Victorian fight club because there is that sense that everybody else gets it's to... far too refined. Yeah. I don't know what that was kind of feeling a, a little bit frustrating because you, you realise everyone, Rachel, Mark Strong, yeah. Jude, obviously, and Robert, they're, they're getting to uh, kick, kick each arts. other. And... yeah. <laughs> no. I don't think Mary is like that. I think, I think Watson's chosen a very nice young woman. I don't think she's somebody who would suddenly... But maybe she'd like to. I'm sure she, she sort of lives through his stories and wants to know more about it. I don't think she's a prude. I, don't think she's, I think she's probably somebody who would be interested in it all, but not necessarily somebody who feels that she could suddenly whack a punch out. But maybe. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> Well, I know with uh, Guy and with Robert and, and Jude too, they were very, very, very intense about getting this right and they'd spend their lunch breaks just talking about what they might do. And it's true, it's they true. Were... They were so passionate about it, so driven, so so obsessive about getting it right. And, you know, it's so nice to see it paid off. And the fact, it's, it is rare to see actors this passionate, this really genuinely getting off on the work and getting off on the, on, on the relationship and how to get it right. And it, is, it was so nice to see that high up the ladder, you know? You must have felt like Mary at times, or given that it was such a uh, kind of intense boys club, because Guy is known for this kind of material, that he likes his, his uh, underworld, he likes his yeah. criminals, he likes his bare knuckle boxing, and, yeah. and that sort of sense that these guys were kind of just, you know, being a little bit of a boys club and figuring out exactly what's going to make these two guys tick. Mm -hmm. and, and Mary's character is a bit, I'm sure, like for an actress on set, it's probably a similar feeling that these guys were on their own little sort of bent, that you were part of the world, but not really in that little yeah. centre that they were creating. Without a doubt. I mean, it is it is what it is. And um, it, was an, it was a nice place for me to sit and watch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, because th th in this case, I definitely feel like, it is, it is their story and um, Mary, Mary is there and she's very, Watson has chosen his woman and she's there and he knows he's there and he's, he's getting to a point in his life where he's, he's ready to move out of the house and become, you know, a, a decent, respectable man in the face of, you know, marrying, of marriage and, and I think it's, um, it's, that's who she is. She's the woman that's at home for him and it's, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You get to land a, a, a beautiful um, straight shot onto Robert Downey's face with a glass of wine. Yes. I don't know if, as a, as a passionate woman yourself, have you ever had the reason to uh, do such a thing in real life? Uh, no, I've good never woman. done that. No. <laughs> no. I was looking over. You've had some great, you know, re good stuff re recently. Me, me and Orson Welles, obviously, at Eden Lake and, mm -hmm. and then Pride and Prejudice, and then Mrs. Henderson presents and all that. There's, I don't know for you if there's a sort of a. a a plan that's in, get going into into action here because you do a lot of theatre and that, that's a lot more to do with the acting the skill of acting rather than making a big glittering career for yourself. I don't know if there's a game plan is working out or whether there's a sense of it's mm. always a struggle. Um, I think if you can blend the two together, having a lovely glittering career and it will be about the acting. <laughs> I think <laughs> if you can marry those two together, I think that would be my game plan if there was one. But I, I don't think it's possible. I think you just. It's almost like you do the work and then you sit around and you wait for the things to sort of come to you and then it's up to you to choose. Yeah, I think that one. No, I don't think so. And, and if that is how you is your game plan, then it's just about 
choice of taste in the moment, you know. It's not really, what will this do for me and what won't that do for me? It's uninteresting. It's usually about, oh, that sounds fun or that sounds difficult, challenging. Two very quick questions and I'm going to wrap up. But the, you shot Puffball in Ireland with the legendary Nick Rogan and the uh, great Donald Sutherland's in there. And, and I'm still trying to figure out what that movie exactly is about. I, mm. I, all I can gather is that Rita Tushingham is on major magic mushrooms throughout the film. That's all I can really figure so far. Yes. Could, do, you know what, do you know what happened in that movie? What, what exactly was, was going on? You know, um, Nick Rogue is an incredible artist. I think he's an incredible filmmaker and one that has been sort of, you know, I don't think has had as much respect as he deserves in this country. Um, and he really um, made a film out of his own heart about women, about fertility, about birth and death. And yes, it doesn't necessarily always make sense, but he's not a linear director. This is not somebody who is sitting around trying, wanting to spoon feed, you know, uh, sorry, uh, spoon feed everybody. He is somebody who, he has very strong visual images and, and it was all about the earth and about nature. And he went for it and we all went with him because he's Nick and he's, uh, he's got a huge heart and a huge mind. and. Um, what comes out in the end, you never know what's going to come out. You take out your cake out of the oven, sometimes it, it, everyone agrees that it tastes great and sometimes, you know, it just doesn't work. And I don't know if it didn't or didn't work critically, I don't think it, it did great, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it shouldn't have been made or there's not something in it that was really worthwhile. And I know Nick feels it was one of the best films he ever made, in wow. his own opinion because he was truthful to, his, to a vision that he wanted to tell and a story and about character. Um, and I was very proud to be part of it. Rock him. and roll. I'll be giving the friendly finger very rapidly All over right. there. Cheers. All right.